Hello and welcome to the next module of the NPTEL online certification course on microelectronics devices and circuits. We to take up today's uh, module as high frequency uh, response of common source and common emitter CMOS based amplifier and we will be concentrating on the uh, frequency spectrum or the frequency how does the how does the gain of the amplifier change with respect to frequency. Uh, what is the motivation for such a module? The motivation is that uh, since these are basically used as audio amplifiers, uh, therefore, uh, they, they, they need to be giving me a constant gain irrespective of large change in the frequency of the input. input. So, my voice goes from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, right? That is a typical audio frequency range. Now, if the amplifier frequency, uh, if, the amp if the amplifier high frequency gain suddenly drops down, say at about 18 kilohertz, 18.5 kilohertz, the gain drops down, then those frequencies or those voices, the voices with those frequencies or the audio range in those frequencies will not be properly amplified and I would not be able to hear those frequencies in a better manner. So, ideally, the gain should be almost independent of frequency uh, for CS and C mode uh, design and that is the reason we need to know what are the factors which influence uh, the behavior of the frequency, uh, the spectrum of the frequency or the band of the frequency. And we will be concentrating currently on the high frequency gain, uh, high frequency part. Uh, just, just to before we move forward, let me recapitulate what we did in our previous uh, module. We saw that in our previous module, we saw that um, uh, we were actually doing what is known as a Bode plot, right? We were doing a Bode plot and in the Bode plot, we were actually uh, looking into what, what is a Bode plot that we saw that Bode plot was basically uh, gain with respect to frequency, we saw that and frequency should be in log scale. We also saw how to make this Bode plot. And uh, we expected what is known as a corner frequency, where the gain drops to where the gain drops to 3 dB of its original value, and at that particular point, uh, what is the frequency we should be able to gather? We also understood what is known as a, a, a phase or a phase margin or a phase, and is defined as minus of tan inverse uh, 2 pi f of tau p, right? where tau p is given as R s parallel to R p multiplied by C p, right. And typically the phase, uh, the phase uh, at, uh, at uh, unity gain, which, which is basically meaning uh, when, whenever you have a unity gain is approximately equals to 45 degree, right. The phase, phase margin, the phase is basically 45 degree. So, we should be able to find out at, at 90 degree when you have uh, we will, you will have 90 degree when frequency is very 0, uh, frequency is 0 you will have 90 degree and then it goes down and becomes uh, phase becomes uh, at a very large value it becomes 0. Somewhere in the middle where the frequency drops to 1 by 2 pi tau s this is 45 degree. So, this is how the phase varies generally for an amplifier right. Uh, the, and, the, and, and the gain how it varies we have already seen working as a low pass, as a high pass, as a band pass filter we can actually do it. We now come and uh, we now discuss about uh, the frequency response. So, what is the outline of this current uh, topic? The current topic is that we will take up another CS amplifier which we have already been doing it uh, previously also. This is basically a common source, uh, common source amplifier, this is a common uh, source amplifier, right. And then uh, we will look into the common emitter amplifier in a BGT configuration and then we will be recapitulating the high frequency response for CS and, and uh, this thing for a common emitter. This is the diagram of or the uh, small signal diagram for uh, a common source amplifier. Let me just draw for you again the common source amplifier itself. The common source amplifier looks something like this. We have already explained it earlier also that we had it looks something like this. Right. I am not giving any source degeneration resistance here and this is the output I am taking and this is my VDD, this is ground right and we have input here and we do have a gate here, uh, sorry we do have a MOS device here which is basically the MOS device here 
and this is my output right. So, if you do a corresponding uh, um, uh, small signal analysis here, I can replace this Q1 by GM VGS remember because GM is basically the transconductance of the device right and GM is defined as equals to del ID uh, del VGS. So, if you multiply this with uh, VGS, the VGS gets cancelled out and you get we are left with the current source. So, therefore, we have already discussed this point that GM multiplied by VGS will give me this current source here. Look at the input part first of all. So, this we will look into the blue part just now. This blue part is actually the device part and this is the circuit which you insert in the input side and this is the circuit which you insert in the output side. So, if you if you go back uh, we generally have an external load here R L right and this is my R D here and I have also a resistance across source and drain and given by R 0. So, this R 0, R D and R L are actually parallel with respect to each other. We will come to that later on. This is the signal source which we are giving right and this is the ideal voltage source. So, it will have almost 0 uh, very low output impedance. But uh, in reality, there will be always a signal impedance available to me, and therefore, that is given by this R sig, which you see. So, R sig is in series to the voltage source. You also have R g, which is basically the resistance which is at the gate side of my design, it typically very large value because the gate resistances are very large, right, and they are held parallel to the gate terminal or the gate node. So, it is very large primarily means therefore, that all your V sig will appear across gates. So, what happens primarily is that your uh, signal voltage which is V sig here goes through a potential divider network of R sig and R g and depending on the relative values of this uh, R sig and R g a part of V sig appears on the gate side of it. You will ask me why we do all these things because the reason being that if you do not do it uh, there might be a chance that the voltage let us suppose the voltage uh, uh, the voltage source suddenly gets short shorted and the voltage source suddenly rises to a very large value then it might destroy the MOS device uh, permanently and uh, that is the reason you generally give a resistive uh, biasing or a potential divider biasing at the input side. So, that not all of the voltage of the gate appears uh, of the of the input signal appears on the gate side right. So, that is the this is all about your left hand side. Now, on the right hand side which is basically your output side if you look very carefully you have R d which is basically the drain resistance, you have a load resistance R l here and you have voltage source or output voltage V 0 and this R 0 is the applied voltage. Now, if you look very carefully if you if you look at this diagram for example, it is very simple it is output by input V 0 is the output voltage by V sig is the input voltage. Uh, is given as GM multiplied by RL prime, where RL prime is basically uh, the parallel combination of R0, RD and RL, R0, RD and RL. So, this is the effective resistance seen by the output voltage source from this side. So, GM multiplied by RL prime multiplied by RG in divided by RG into RG plus R sig. Therefore, I can safely write down V 0 to be equals to minus G m times R L into V G S because V G S is the input voltage and uh, your uh, minus G m times R L prime is basically the voltage gain which you see and R D L prime is this one. Now, uh, uh, the gate to drain voltage now let me let me come to this blue part and explain to you the other principles here. See uh, you do have this is the so MOSFET is basically as you remember uh, from your basic uh, days that is basically a 3 terminal device it is 4 terminal, but for all practical purposes in this case we will take as 3 terminal. So, this is your gate, this is your drain right and this is your source. So, our source gate and drain right are these 3 terminals are there with me. Now, a gate to drain you will always have a capacitance which is the depletion capacitance by virtue of um, overlap between gate and drain remember this is CGD right. You also have a CGS gate to source. So, if you remember your basic uh, MOS device structure and then it looks something like this and then you have something like gate and this is your gate here, this is your gate, this is your source and drain. So, you will always have a capacitance here and a capacitance here. This is CGS right and this is your CGD 
fine. So I have a CGS and I have a CGD capacitances uh, across the two ends uh, which is with me. Now what happens is that once you multiply, so if you want to find out the total current flowing through IGD or the gate to drain current, uh, then because of the overlap capacitances, then it is basically CGD multiplied by v, VGS that is the current, but you also have a term 1 plus GM multiplied by RL prime. This is known as what is known as a Miller multiplier factor, this is the Miller multiplier. Right, it is a Miller multiplier. It means that your C equivalent, if you look at C equivalent, is nothing but C G D multiplied by 1 plus G M times R L prime, which means that quite an interesting phenomena that gate to drain capacitance appears in the output side as a increased value of capacitance by how much? 1 plus G M times R L prime. So, higher the value of your transconductance of the MOS device more will be the current of course, but then more will also be the uh, gate to drain capacitances. So, from where I am getting this we will not discuss at this stage, but at this stage we will just assume it to be a Miller indices uh, or, a, or a mirror multiplier if time permits we will come to this later on, which means that because of some, uh, some uh, overlap you generally have a Miller capacitances which comes into picture and these Miller capacitances tend to show an increased value of your capacitances. Right, and therefore, I get CGD 1 plus GM times RL which you see here as you can see here. right? And from here uh, if I go back to my previous uh, and therefore, if we, if, we, if we just drew the small signal model of it one, I get CGS here, I get CGD here and this is GM VGS is the current source. This RL prime takes care of R0 plus parallel to RD parallel to RL and uh, this R sig is basically R sig into is parallel to RG. So, it will be basically R sig R g divided by R sig plus R g right this 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 value right this is the this is the typical value which you get and this is the effective value which you get uh, for all practical purposes. Now, let me come to uh, explanation here and explain to you maybe a simple derivation here that let me show to you that I have a V sig here I have a R sig here there is a C g s gate to source right across which you will have VGS and this is your R sig, this is your V signal right and uh, then you have your C G D into 1 plus G M times R L prime. So, this is the effective value which you see in front of you. Now, now, uh, now if you if you therefore plot the output side I will I can I can write it safely as G M times R L prime right, this will be in parallel to R L prime and the, there will be output here. So, this will be the input side and this is your output side right and I get R L prime multiplied by V 0. Now, R L prime consists of uh, three, 3 resistances and these 3 resistances will be responsible for giving you the overall picture. Now, therefore, if you plot V 0 by V sorry V signal output voltage by V signal voltage, I will typically get a general form or will be 1 plus S by omega H in terms of S, where A M is the mid frequency gain which is independent of frequency remember is nothing but by this G M times R L. <laughs> this is the mid frequency gain which you get. So, that is the mid frequency gain which you get here. At 3 dB if you want to find out then I get F of H equals to omega H by 2 pi and therefore, I get f of h to be equals to 1 by 2 pi right r in into s into v sorry sorry let me just again write down this whole thing. So, that is easy here and then so I get 2 pi right c in into r sig this is your sort of a 3 dB corner frequency. So, the corner frequency which is again a 3 dB corner frequency is being primarily determined by the input capacitance here and the uh, R sig. What is the input capacitance? Input capacitance is nothing but C g s gate to source plus C g d into 1 plus g m times R l prime. Why? Because this is this are in parallel to each other and therefore, they will be adding directly with respect to each other. 
right and you can see quite an interesting phenomena which has come out from here that therefore depending on the value of cgs the frequency of the cutoff frequency or, uh, or the 3 db frequency will go on changing similarly if you make your gm higher because you want the current to be high because you want the gain to be high this gain to be high for example you end up having uh, a, 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 a smaller value of fh right so your smaller value of fh primarily means that uh, your cutoff frequencies are lowered now not a good idea for if you want your bandwidth to be very large and that's the reason that the designing is a bit critical that just simply by increasing the transconductance of the of the device will not always make your life easier and it that this is what the problem area which you face in general you get okay so this is the structure which you get from here let me come to therefore the effective as i was discussing with you just now that i have got uh, this is the effective resistance which is seen from the device this is the signal resistance and the current flowing through is igd gate to drain and c equivalent is given by cgd 1 plus gm times rl whereas cn is therefore will be equal to cgs plus this quantity so c in will be a sum of these two quantities and that's the reason i was telling to you that effective c in value will be given as cgs plus cgd into 1 plus gm times rl prime right and that is what you what you will get here this is the rl prime which you get and this is the mos device equivalent circuit and this is my output voltage final output voltage given by minus gm times rl prime minus vgs negative sign because uh, it is uh, phase shifted by 180 degree and therefore <coughs> you will always have a negative sign attached to it with this knowledge let me therefore plot for you uh, the, the the function which we have just now derived and if you look very very in this omega as i discussed with you was was 1 by 2 c in so this omega 0 is basically uh, uh, 2 pi f of 0 is equals to of f of h is equals to 1 by c in r sig so f of h will be 1 by 2 pi c in r sig and that is what is written here also. So, this omega is referred to as a pole frequency or the corner frequency and it is given by this. So, if I if I write down in terms of v0 by v sig it is minus rg by rg plus r sig into gmrl into 1 upon 1 plus s by omega naught because it if you if you as I discussed with you general formula is a a a of omega which is the mid frequency gain upon 1 plus s by omega that is the general formula for any gain structure of any amplifier this is the mid frequency gain mid frequency gain is given by this quantity right so this divided by 1 plus 1 plus s by j omega omega h is given by 1 by c in into r sigma and therefore this is the formula which i just now discussed with you here where therefore as i discussed with you c in is equal to cgs plus cgd this much where r sig prime is equals to this much and fh equals to 1 by 2 pi c in into uh, r sig therefore at fh which is this one i would expect to see a 3 db drop in my uh, gain right so the corner frequency is that frequency at which i get a 3 db drop in my gain right and it is and, and the point at which this happens is determined by the value of c in an r, r signal which is the output impedance of my voltage source which is driving the MOS device and the input capacitance is seen by the MOS device determines it right. Please understand there is no output capacitance still playing a role here a apart from CGD gate to drain. So, gate to drain is again multiplied by 1 plus gm times RL prime. So, the input capacitance comes from CGS gate to source and the output side comes from gate to drain and then both get added up together and that gives you the value of your this thing all right so this is your 20 log a of m this is the mid frequency gain which you get at higher frequencies therefore they start to drop down therefore a common source or a common emitter mode configuration at higher frequencies also shows a drop of 20 db per decade which we have already discussed in our uh, previous uh, modules right and we have seen that it this works pretty fine uh, pretty fine for all the practical purposes uh, we will come to common emitter before we come to common emitter therefore let me explain to you uh, what is known as um, as a as a open circuit timing open circuit uh, open circuit time constant and explain to you what is known as an open circuit time constant and i will show to you how it works out so let me uh, give you an so i have a signal source here and i have grounded and this goes to gate this is r sig which you see and then the same thing can be continued 
and I will have the current source here right current source current source here and then this is G m times V G s right and then you have got R l prime this is your current. So, this is your plus minus V G s right. So, I get from here if you do small analysis I am not doing it in the whole because it is out of scope. I will get the total uh, this thing will be given as C G s multiplied by R G s plus C G C G D right. Let me write down for you. Uh, let me just uh, C G uh, D multiplied by R G D plus C L multiplied by R C L. So, uh, C L is the load capacitance multiplied by the resistance offered by the load capacitance in terms of uh, uh, loading. So, if I do a small uh, rejig I get C G S multiplied by R C assuming that R G S is approximately equals to R C and if I do a C G D common here I get R C right R C into 1 plus G m times R l prime right right plus R l prime right why because this R l prime is coming here right plus C l times R l prime. So, I will get C l times R l prime here. So, if you solve it I get f of h becomes approximately equals to 1 by 2 pi tau of h. So, if you put tau of h down I get this to be 1 upon 2 pi right. Uh, C G S multiplied by R sig right plus C G D multiplied by this whole quantity this suppose is x x plus C L times R L prime. So, you see that the F H value depends upon the value of your gate to source capacitance. It also depends upon the value of gate to drain, but multiplied by 1 plus G M R L because of Miller uh, Miller multiplication factor and you also depends upon the value of your external load uh, voltage which is seen to us right and that gives you a typically a nice idea about uh, the open time constant for uh, for uh, for this case for the case of uh, common emitter mode configuration. Let me come to common, em common emitter amplifier we have a BJT based common emitter, emitter amplifier. So, now you have this is the base right this is the collector and this is the emitter. Uh, now, this is your signal and so this is your signal and this is your base resistance which you see right R b. So, R g there is analogous to R b here and R 0, R c and R l are the effective load in the output side. So, this is your actual device, this is your actual device where this is the base, this is the base terminal, emitter terminal and collector terminal and we have got two capacitance here C pi and C mu, these are basically the capacitances. Uh, depletion capacitances between emitter base and emitter emitter base collector and base emitter. So, emitter base emitter collect emitter base is C pi and base collector is C mu and G m times V pi is basically the amount of voltage or the current flowing through the bipolar junction transistor to the BJT right. Now, if you if you solve it, it is exactly the same as the previous case. The only thing here is that you now have if you look from the left hand side which is this one for a common emitter based configuration, I get V sig multiplied by R b upon R b plus R sig. This gives you a sort of a voltage divided network and gives you effective value of voltage seen on the base side of the uh, common emitter configuration divided into uh, R pi upon R pi plus R x. So, if this is again a voltage divided network which you see here R sig plus R b which is R sig is basically your this, this part right parallel to R b, R b is the base resistance offered by the device and R pi and R x are nothing but the pi and x value of your uh, emitter base collector junction and R l is basically R 0, R c, R l. So, collector resistance, load resistance and the resistance offered by the device itself right and that gives you the value of R c prime and your V c prime. Uh, with this uh, uh, if you plot again exactly the same thing as your previous case. So, a common source and a common, common source MOS based amplifier and the common emitter bipolar transistor high frequency looks to almost the same qualitatively as well as more so quantitatively. If you plot again therefore, gain versus frequency and you see that your cutoff frequency f h comes out to be again somewhere here which depends upon the value of c in an R sig prime 
right and this is again the miller miller uh, capacitance which you see miller indices maybe in the next uh, module i will just give you a small insight into miller capacitances because this is quite an important uh, term uh, which will be encountering time and again in especially in amplified circuits and we will be uh, i might go into details of this one at a later time later uh, maybe in the next module maybe right so i get 20 db per decade drop here which you see this gives me a drop which is quite uh, substantial drop in terms of uh, voltage gain in in terms of uh, in terms of voltage gain if you therefore see and try to find out one one important point which you should be uh, which you should know or which you should be able to find out is that as i discussed in the starting of the lecture that typically if you take up a transfer function hs and you do have a second order transfer function say ax is a square plus bs plus c then you typically have two uh, two poles omega p1 and omega p2 why because it is a square term here so there will be two poles associated with it similarly if there is a cubic term in the denominator you will have three poles associated with it omega p1 omega p2 and omega p3 right and so these poles will depend upon the placement of these poles will depend upon the frequency at which they are operating in a in a, a sigma j omega plot so the same again i'm just repeating the same thing which we did, did earlier that i get am the mid frequency gain is given by this whole quantity multiplied by gm times rl prime right with the negative sign because again here a 180 degree phase shift rl uh, rl this is basically rl prime so rl prime will be equals to r0 in parallel to rc parallel to rl and I get this again V0 by V sig, I get C in equals to this much and I get R sig. So, I wanted to just give you an idea that uh, I wanted to give you an idea that if you take a MOS, MOS based amplifier uh, in a CS configuration or a BJT in a CE configuration, the behavior is almost the same qualitatively as quantitatively right and it depends up and the, and the, and the primary pole, the pr first pole or the pr major pole comes because of C in times R sig right because of this you will get a frequency which is a 3 dB frequency uh, available to me right um, and so so the, so let me recapitulate the upper uh, 3 dB frequency is determined the interaction of as I discussed with you R sig and C in as I discussed with you therefore that typically your um, your 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 3 dB 3 dB bandwidth will be or the 3 dB cutoff point will be determined by the product of R sig and uh, R sig R sig and um, C in. So, this will be the product which will determine me the FH value. Uh, now, uh, one important point which we have also studied this time around is because of Miller effect, we will take up this Miller effect in detail maybe next module. In the if you take a Miller effect, then CS amplifier or even a BJT shows you an exaggerated value of your output capacitances, uh, which is multiplied by a typically a factor of GM times RL. So, your effective value increases and that is the problem area that though you want to increase the gain by increasing the value of transconductance of the device, uh, you end up having also a larger value of your input effective value of your input capacitance and therefore, your, uh, your, your frequencies cutoff frequencies also get reduced drastically and you would not get a large band of uh, constant gain feature right and that is the problem area which people face as far as this, uh, this structure especially with Miller, Miller capacitance is concerned. With this we have uh, almost uh, finished with the concept of this thing, we, next time when we come back we will discuss source follower and maybe a part of Miller effect to give you a feeling about what Miller effect is and how does it influence our high frequency response of a CS or a CE or a source follower amplifier. Okay? Thank you very much.